Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon. In this episode we are going to sample the sweet nectar of an undeserved win. So one of the games I was playing, I was losing and I think now, I think, I mean you're never quite sure with chess are you? I think I'm going to win now, which um, is fascinating and it's this game. So I was sure I was losing this game and I think after this move, my theory is that this wins because after b4, this is what I think, after b4, then takes takes and my pawn's queening first and if white goes for that pawn, the other pawn queens, I mean just let's say this, let's just say this and then there's just like a check here and all of a sudden black's, uh, you know, I mean takes, push. So, I think if you bypass it's bad, and then what's kind of cute is when white takes, black's got c5. That is the advantage of having the pawn on its starting square. You can choose one or two squares, because clearly one square would be catastrophic, but two squares looks like it's just winning. So, I think that after a4, I think I'm winning. Now, just for the record, after c4 i'm absolutely lost because either this and then this or if you just play a4 you just white's just got an outside pass pawn so frankly i didn't deserve that and um it's quite instructive pawn end games can be uh pawn end games are very difficult they're very mathematical and even though there's they look simple they can be really hard um this one I'm just wasting time people who've watched other episodes will know that basically white is in one big zug zwang and it's a bit ironic because I'm playing against horde coach but I learned this from one of his videos so all the pawn breaks lose either a pawn or they allow me to sacrifice a minor piece for two pawns in an advantageous way this one I think I've lost because basically what's going to happen is something like this, something a lot like this. Here, sacks the rook, and now the queen's broken through to the back because you can't stop. I mean, if you push here, takes there. So you can start to try to, I don't know, do things. I mean, I don't trust, I don't really believe this. Um... You can start to try to break through, but um, I, I don't know if there's going to be time, frankly. So what do I do about all of this? Well, I play this and cross my fingers. This game against Stuart, so I thought a bit about this. I think what I'm going to do is play h3 so I can't get mated at the back. If black tries to get active with the queen, then I think I can probably win that knight. So, this, I looked at playing queen a8 here, but you got rook a7. Uh, because that, yeah, that pin knight is a bit vulnerable. So if one of the major pieces exits, I think you can you can win the knight. So I think just h3, just be patient, and then we'll look at what to do next. This one against Liam, I'm playing the check, and I'm going to play the knight against the rook, and I'm going to... I think it's... I think black's got some drawing chances. I'm not sure if it's technically drawn. Pretty check as well, defending the rook. Phew. Ah, the game against Keith. So don't you play knight g4 in these positions? Knight g4. Yeah. Knight e4 looks scary, doesn't it? Knight h5, like... I'm sure you can play knight h5. What's that called, that line? That's what... What all the computers play is... e4, e5, f4, takes, knight f3, and then f6 straight away. The shallop defence, I think it's called. Isn't it called the shallop defence when you go... I've got to know now. If you go like this... That's what the engines all want to play these days. Shallop defense. E5. Knight H5. But actually, 
It's pretty, it looks awkward out there, but it's defending the pawn. It's pretty good out there. I don't know. Anyway, we're not playing the Schlop defense. We're playing bishop e7, the Cunningham defense. And after this, we're putting the knight on g4 where it belongs. I play these, I play these sort of positions a lot. This has been my favorite defense because it's sort of, it's a developing move and it allows black to, it doesn't make the position too unbalanced. Okay, this one I think we've won. Because I just think what we're gonna do is stalemate the king. We've shown it on other videos. We stalemate the king. We then force one of the pawns to move forward. We then just let one of the pawns survive. Give one of our pawns back to release the king from stalemate. And we've got a winning advantage. This one I think we're lucky enough to be winning a piece. Check. And the king cannot stay in touch with the knight. This is a game against Nigel. This is really hard. This is really complicated. I spent a lot of time looking at this. I've got, actually got a... Don't think the queen can get trapped. The, luckily there's no dark square bishop on the board. But clearly if this knight moves it's a bit alarming. But not that alarming. Where's it going to go? There. There. Maybe there. But then the queen can come here. How about... I thought about rook d7. To challenge the rook. Doesn't that look like a good move? What if the rook moves here? Will it though? Maybe it will. Also, what about knight h5? That's a bit more... Uh, why not knight h5? So the big thing is, after knight h5, what do you do about a move like this? You just run and say, well, you'll probably take... And you just run. Is that any good? It's alright, isn't it? Why don't we play knight h5? Isn't that a good move? So many forks threatened, right? What's white got? This isn't too scary, is it? Because you can take here with check. But then you've got to be careful, really careful about this. You've got to play a move like this, haven't you? Um, maybe that's the move. So hang on. So, but hang on, knight here, and just take it, can't you? It's not that scary. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm a great chess player, okay. Um, oh, come on, let's play the knight move then. I think the knight move's a bit better. Isn't it? That moves all right. There's no horrible discoveries, is there? No. I think this is under control. Famous last words. Well, I've played it now. This one, I think Gary's beating me here. Well, I mean, he, he keeps threatening to, re not keeps threatening, he threatened to resign. Not resign, he threatened to offer me a draw. I wish he'd resign. <laughs> Threaten to offer me a draw. I quite like a draw because I think I'm going to lose. Okay, well, anyway, in lieu of a draw, I'm playing this and hoping. I don't think I can stop those pawns. To be honest with you, I think this is a disaster. What are we going to do? Those pawns look really scary. You can't push because you play rook takes. Can't defend the pawn. I suppose you could resign. I don't know, I've got a bad feeling about this. Okay, let's just do some variations and see if we got some hope. Bishop takes. We take. Rook takes. Attack the pawn. Push. How are we going to stop it? We might have some chance, but I don't think we've got much chance. I don't think we've got much chance of stopping these pawns. This one might have gone. That's very, very disappointing. Well... To be honest, we can either bring the knight closer or bring the king closer. I mean, I don't quite know what to say. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring the knight closer, but 
as you may have picked up, I'm not enormously optimistic about the prospects for this game. Black played a really creative sacrifice, so I must have missed something here. Here, I think, Joseph, who's a very good player, I think, I, I think I'm winning this now. I think after we swap queens, I'm winning the, pawn, the, the rook and pawn ending. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it for now. Game against Justin. I want the knight to start jumping around these weak light squares on the king's side. No spoiler alerts. This game, I pin the bishop. But um, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I have some concerns about this game. <laughs> Concern is I might lose it. This one against Nick, I haven't actually worked out what to do. I mean, probably you play knight c3. I'm sure they all do, yeah. Knight c3 is sort of... Knight c3 is crying out to be played, isn't it, really? I mean... You can play d4. Why do you not play d4 now? Probably because... Knight c3 is a better move. d4 is a bit... Well, I think... You, we may not want to play d4, that's why. And we don't have to play it now. I think that's alright. Oh! Okay, so someone's a bit, a bit less... Someone's deliberating a bit less than I am. Yeah, I think now... I think d4 is going to be my next move. Although... Having said that, rookie one might also be. I think rookie one's also a good move here. So we'll have to see. Okay. So, all right, fine. This one, this one. Is that? It can't be all of them, is it? Look, I'm a queen up here. That won't last for long, though. Is that all of them? Did time really fly that quickly? It really does. Okay, it's five to two in the morning. I know. They're all the games. They're all the games, aren't they? Look at that. Next. I think there are one or two of them. Ian's gone into the tank on our games. Which worries me. Gareth is in the tank. Okay, well look, that's brilliant. Let's have a look at these ones. I've been challenged. Is it somebody I know? If you're somebody I know, then let me know. I'm sorry, I don't recognise you. But if it is someone I know, then let me know. This one, I'm surprised the pawn took. Because I think there were lots of good tactics that use the open file. So now I suppose the problem is that e7 pawn. But can I, or can I just attack the bishop here? Why not? You can start, I think actually this is good. You can just hit the bishop, can't you? Can't you? Just hit the bishop. See where it's going to go. But at some stage we need to play e7. Okay, we're going to do that. This one, I'm afraid black has a really nice tactic here. We take here with the bishop and I think we get a lot of material. I don't know what the material balance at the moment is. Equal, right? I'm afraid that's pinning the queen to the king, and also it's hitting the rook. And probably take the queen. And that white pawn can't cause too much trouble. We can always take back with the knight. Don't you think? I think that one's gone. Four pawn attack. Very sharp opening. This one, I think here, we're just going to trudge up the board. Trudge, trudge, trudge. What have we got? Two extra pawns. Rook's rule is this rook endgame one. This one, our king is going to try to wander into some of those weak squares. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. We like weak squares. This one, don't know what to do here. I hope I'm not walking into anything too silly here. Let's play this. That can't be wrong, can it? I don't think I'm going to get mullered here. Uh, 
I suppose the danger is what you do after e5. You can't. You don't want to take it. But I think you move back and let them take. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Should take that. I'll take that, haven't you? Because my opponent's got more space, I think swapping off is good. I also think we want to prepare b5. We can't play b5 straight away, but I think getting the light square bishops off is probably a step in the right direction. We can't let white take on f5. Here, I think we're going to withdraw and pin the pawn. Makes me happy. Here... I don't know, what do you think? Should we push the f-pawn? Should we play, should we put the knight on b5? Should we prepare e5? We should probably prepare e5, shouldn't we? It's probably the right thing to do, is to prepare e5. Okay, let's start to prepare e5. We're going to develop the bishop, so-called. And then we're going to put the rook, the A rook on E1 and prepare E5. See what black's going to do in the meantime. Probably should play E6 or something. Probably. Just something to try and get some space before you get squashed. Knight F3, Knight F6, G3, D5. Let's try and create something interesting position. Just on that one, this is the Retty thing, isn't it? How's the Retty one going? I'm losing. Well, I, I hope to get through. I think I can find a way to get through here. I think two go through, and I think there's only about six people left in it from a big field, so I should really try and get through. This is in the same tournament. Bishop here. Get the bishops off? I think so. I think so. Nice isolated pawn there for me. I mean, it's not nice, but it's nice for me. Because I don't have it. Here, do we just castle? Maybe we're a pawn up. Well, I think we're a pawn up. This is in my tournament. Show the world your chess skill. I think this is the game against Josh. I saw his parents today. We had a chat. We had a chat about this game. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve off the bishop. I think I'm a pawn up. Pawn is nice. Slightly safer king. I don't think white's winning, but I think white's better. And white's optimistic. It's a pawn, right? So, and I've got the two bishops. And, and I've got the safer king, so I would expect to win that one, frankly. This is amazing. Look, we've got a chance of a lovely tactic here. Takes. We showed this in a previous video. Takes. Can we see the tactic? Queen here. I think, so in other words, I don't think black can take this. So I think uh, we've got a bit of initiative here. We might even have a pawn. We might even have a rook. I think that's less likely. But, um, yeah, I think this. I think it's a Rossolimo. Should we just quickly look at it? I think it's a Rossolimo that, um, frankly, I mean, well, okay, they're calling it a canal attack. Okay, I think this is a, isn't this a Wesley So recommendation? I saw him play against Magnus Carlsen. I think I took it from his chessable course as well. Basically, what you do is, Swap off and you open the centre. It didn't look that good here, but all of a sudden this move, this Queen G4 move, changed everything. And then you just thought, wow, we've actually got we got some play in the dark squares, right? The dark squares are weak. Iron Throne of the Seven Kingdoms 3. I've had a draw. How very exciting. But I'm relatively low rated in this, but I'm I'm optimistic. You need, you need two to go through. So um, two of us can go through. I think it, if I actually pull myself together, I could do okay in that one. I 
Aaron. Okay. Let's develop a knight. Let's develop a knight. I think that's it, isn't it? I feels like that's it. So basically, it's two o'clock in the morning, but we've got to do some tactics. It's really important that we do at least one tactics puzzle, and then everyone can go to bed. Okay. It's black to move. I love a tactics puzzle, don't you? So straight away, we think... Pawn G5, Pawn G4. So, well, straight away we go Rook G5, threatening mate. Rook G5, it's a bit of a mating net, isn't it? King H4, King F4, threatening mate next, and how's that stopped? King runs back to... I want to play rook g4. Come on, let's do it properly. Rook g5, how can that possibly be... How can the mate be stopped? There's only king h4. Then I play the king here. Then maybe the king goes back. No, hang on. No, hang on. Rook g5, king h4 doesn't stop anything. It's just mate. I mean, it's actually weirdly impossible to stop. I mean, sure, you can push e6 and then we take the rook and then e7, then it's mate. Yeah, we take the rook. Well, that's enough of that. I hope you're all well. I enjoyed this. I always enjoy this and uh, see you all soon.